there are some companies that are true bellwethers, companies that give you a terrific read on an entire sector. And one of these bellwethers disappoints you. Got to be a little concerned. Take Abnet, ABT. I like to describe it as at least part of its business as the largest supermarket of technology on earth. The company's the number one distributor of electronic components like semiconductors. They also have a large tech solutions business where they distribute IT hardware, software, and services. In the past, Abnet's been a fabulous way to take the pulse of all kinds of tech hardware. So when the company reported numbers this morning that missed Wall Street's estimates, five cent earnings miss off of a dollar three basis on lower than expected revenues, stock got clobbered, falling three dollars and fifteen cents or six point seven percent. You have to wonder if that's a sign for all companies whose products Abnet distributes or maybe contracts Abnet has. It's just merely maybe a one off stumble that the well-run Abnet can bounce back from pretty quickly. Let's take a closer look with Rick Amata. He's the CEO of Abnet to learn more about the quarter and what's next for the company. Rick, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank you, Jim. Pleasure to be here. Well, first, I, I applaud you coming back because you come in in great times. This was not a great quarter by your own admission. I'm not uh, pulling any punches That's here. Right. But what, what right. mystified me was that it seemed like the business was going real well for the first 12 weeks of the quarter. And then at the end, it, it went soft. You're so consistent. Jim, How did that happen? Jim, it was very localized in our North American computer business, that week 13 anomaly. If you look at our components business globally and you look at our uh, computer business both in Europe and Asia, it was much more on track to our expectations. So uh, overall, even though our performance both at revenue and EPS was in the guidance range, of course, we didn't hit that all-important midpoint, but the, the, the gap here was really highly concentrated in that shortfall in North America that showed up late in the quarter. Okay, so Rick, here's what we have to deal with. I'm dealing with a lot of American companies that saying things are, are getting better. So then I start thinking, is this execution in America by you, or right. is there some right. uh, cohort of the customers that I just don't know that aren't doing well? No, it's, it's again, very, very good question, Jim. What we've done is we've taken a look at that pipeline that we had specifically identified and in our sites for that end of the quarter, and we've watched it transition over into the fourth quarter. We're taking a look at what's being booked. We're taking a look at what's being still tracked through that pipeline overall. And we laid out guidance for the June quarter that is very much in line with normal seasonal expectations. So right now, we don't believe there's some major secular trend due to that late quarter signal. But at the same time, we're going to watch our dashboards, and we always share the best information we have at the time. And today on the call and on this uh, interview, it's the best information we have as of April 24th. Okay, now, uh, this makes me sound like it's not demand-creating, but there are push-outs because of what you guided. Uh, again, uh, in industrial America, uh, maybe some – the only guys that have numbers that weren't exactly blow up were server companies. I, I saw one server company right. that, uh, that didn't report great numbers, but most of the industrial right. America is strong. So where would a push-out right. be? What kind of character of a company would be pushing out orders? Yeah, so again, in, in the IT space, at the very end of the quarter, they, they, didn't, they didn't eliminate it. They just decided, maybe I'm not going to issue that purchase order this quarter. Remember, these are highly qualified, specifically identified projects where a company is planning to deploy capital to be able to invest in servers, storage, technology to bolster onto their data center, build out their private cloud, or add maybe to their hybrid environment. And uh, the, that we were on a linear track through that first 12 weeks, and it's not a major call in industrial. This really is in that IT space and the small to medium business segment that we and our VARs service for those major servers, storage, networking vendors that we represent. On our component side of our business, Jim, the Americas region was the weakest of the three for components, but at the same time, we, they had some, some, of our, some of our suppliers are highlighting uh, pockets of strength in some very direct areas like high-end auto, et cetera, that normally aren't the, the, uh, the domain for the distributors to service. Well, what I've known about Abnet is when Abnet feels that things are one-off or that there's just this moment where the stock is being misinterpreted, you do go back into the market. You have not bought back stock in the, uh, of any consequence in the last eight quarters. I thought that was right. The stock took off. You had told me $29, $30 at that point was, was interesting. Is this the kind of thing where you feel confident that perhaps that buyback should be deployed given the fact that you're not cutting your demand forecast? Yeah, we were very pleased with the cash flow for the quarter, Jim. That, we thought that was one of the highlights. And uh, we are evaluating our value-based approach. Remember, we treat buyback as, think of it as an alternative form of acquisition opportunity. And when we believe our own equity represents a compelling investment proposition, we're going to get in. I've always shared that we, we tend to triangulate looking at discounted cash flow, right. 
We look at uh, forward PE based on our internal financial projections, and we put a standing order in place with a certain strike price that if the stock does recede to a certain point, we're in. We did buy a very little bit last right. quarter because there was a dip actually after last uh, right. announcement, and we'll be evaluating that get-in point and reestablishing that to make sure it's in as we go through cycles. But you recognize that I'm I've always felt that Abnet's totally consistent. This was an inconsistent report for you guys. Yes, it was. Absolutely. No, no way to hide behind it. But, Jim, I'll show up rain or shine to always tell you what we're seeing. And that's why I like Advent. And that's why I appreciate what you do, Rick. Thank you so much for coming on Mad Money. Thank you, Jim. Okay, that's Rick Amata, straight shooter, CEO of Avnet. I tend to believe that it is one off. It was surprising to me because I've told you over and over again how consistent this company is. It was one line. It was America. But you know what? You got to puzzle through it yourself. I'm still puzzling through it. Stick with Kramer.